Hello, my name is Catherine, and today I'll be going over the Java version of Snake Game. So first, we'll be creating a new project, and you can title it whatever you want. Afterwards, we'll need to create all the classes for our Snake Game, which are basically blueprints for all the objects we will use to create our game. Main is auto-generated, so we don't have to create that. We'll also need a class for cell, which are basically all the squares you saw on the game I just ran earlier. A board class, which contains all the cells. A game frame class, which creates a window in which we can view our snake game. A game panel class, which is the interactive portion of our game frame. And a snake class, which is the collection of cells that make our snake. After we have created all the classes for our game, we will now need to create an enum called type. For those of you who don't know, an enum is basically a data structure with preset types that we can set a variable to. In this case, we want type to be all the different types a cell can be. So first, we know that a cell can hold a snake body part. So we'll have a type called snake. We'll also need a type called wall, which is basically the border of our board or game because that will help us with collisions of the snake later on. You'll also need a food type that symbolizes a cell that holds the apple and an empty type for a cell that does not hold any object. Now that we've defined all the types a cell can be, we can now create the definition of our cell. The variables in this class that we'll need are row and column, which are private final integers. They will be used to describe the Y and X position of the cell on the board respectively. We will also need to have a variable for the type the cell is, which we'll call type. Now that we have the variables that we'll need for our cell class, we can now start on the constructor. Upon first initialization, we will need to know the position of the cell. So we will take in row and call variables in our constructor. We will set it to our class row and call variables. For our class variables, we will need to use this dot to make sure that the computer understands that the variables we are looking at are part of the class and not the inputted row and call variables. We will also need functions to get and set variables in the cell class as other classes cannot access these variables. We will first need a function which we'll call set type. And this will be a void function. Set type will basically just set the type of the cell. And it will take a variable type so we know what type we want to set it to. We will also need a function called get type, and this will return our type variable. Afterwards, we need to make a function to return our row position, and we'll just basically return row. And we'll make another function, which we'll call get call to return the column position of our cell. After we have created the cell class definition, we can then create our board class definition. We will need to create the final integers row C and call C, which are the bounds of our board, or basically the number of rows and columns that our board contains. 
We will also create a TD array of cell instances, which we'll call cells, that basically contains all the cells that are in our board. For the constructor, we will need to take in the row C and whole C variables and set them to our own class, row C and whole C variables. We will also need to resize our 2D array cells to these new bounds. Afterwards, we will also need to create an embedded for loop to iterate through each position in our cells array. Since the array is zero indexed, we will start iterating our row position, which we'll call R at zero. And make sure that it is one below our row count. We will then need to do the same thing with our column position, which we'll call C, but make sure it is just one below the call count. Once we've had our two for loops or embedded for loops, we will now need to set the cell position for R and C to a new cell with those same positions. Afterwards, we need to set that cell type to empty. And we will use the set type function in our cell class to do that. However, we also need to make sure that we're setting the wall cells to the type wall. So we'll do this by checking if the R and C or a row and column positions are on the edge. So that can either happen if the row or column position is zero or if they're just below, just one below the row or column count. Then we have a general section of functions to set or get different objects of the board. The first one we'll use will return the actual cell array from our board and we will call this get cells. We will then have another function called set cell. And this function will get a row and column position and based on that position, set the element or cell in that position to a type. So we will get the element using the row and call positions and use the function set type in our cell class to set the actual type we passed in. Lastly, we will also need to return the type of a cell at a specific position our board, so we'll, we will call that function get cell type. And we will need a row and column position to know what element we want. Um, and we also need to use the function get type from our self class so that we can get the actual type of that cell. Our last function is for generating the food for our snake. We will call this function generating food or just generate food. We will have two variables, row and call, and we will use them to get a random position for our new food. So we will use a while loop and we wanna make sure that our row and column that we get for the random position is 
empty. So we will have the condition if the row and column position in the cells array dot get type, which we created in our cells class, is empty. Then we will break because we have found a acceptable row and column position. But now we need to find a randomization process for our specific row and column variables. So we will use the function called math.random, which returns a float between zero and one. And it also includes zero. And we will multiply it by our row and column bounds, row C and call C to get row and column positions that are in the bounds of our board. We will also need to use int in front of our row and column positions because an integer times a float is not necessarily also an integer. Afterwards, we just need to set our new row and column positions for the food to type food. Our last non-graphics class is snake, which is a collection of cells that contain the body of the snake. We will need to import linked list for this part. For our variables, we will need a linked list, which we'll call snake part list. It will store all the cells in order that currently contain this snake body. And we will specifically be using a linked list since we can add and take away from both the front and back of this data structure. We will then need a variable for the head or start of our snake. And we will also create an integer called start, which is length of the cell body when it is initiated. For our constructor, we will take a cell containing the initial position of the snake as well as the board being used by the class using our snake class in question. For our variable start, we will loop that amount of times and inside we set our head to the initial position row as well as the initial position column added to i or the number of times we have iterated through our for loop. We will specifically be adding i to our column so that we keep adding body parts in front of the last body part that we added. We will then add this head to the beginning of our snake part list. And we will be setting this head type to we will also need to set the coordinates of the head and board to type snake since the head and the position in board with the head don't exactly correlate We will also need move and grow functions for our snake, which nominally grow and move our snake.
In both of these classes, we will need to pass in Nexel, which is a Nexel that the snake is moving to, and the board instance being used by the class the instance that the snake is in. For both, we will set the head to the next cell that the snake is going to, as well as the positions of the next cell to snake on our board. We will also add the head to our snake part list as the first part. And as you see here, we will need to use the get row and get call functions to actually get the row and call on position of the head. However, for the move function, we will also need to erase the last part of the snake. So we will need to get the tail or the last part of the snake part list and remove it. We can do this in one function and that's called remove last. We will then set the coordinates of tail to empty. After we've created the move and grow functions, we will also need functions to get specific variables from our snake function. So for example, we need our linked list snake part list. And we will just basically create a function which I'll call get snake part list. And we will return our snake part list. Our second function that we'll need is to get the head of our list, which will just return the cell head. Once we created all the non-graphics parts of our snake game, we can now create the graphics parts. So we'll first start with game frame and we'll need to import Java java.x.swing.jframe. And we'll use this import by ex making our class extend game frame. So basically what extends means is that game frame inherits the J frame class. And so basically it has all the public properties of J frame. So what J frame does is basically make a window in your computer. So our game frame class will be doing just that. First, we'll want to make the constructor of game frame. And inside, we're just gonna add all the properties that we want our window to have. So first, we wanna add a title for our window, and we're just gonna call our window snake. Afterwards, we're going to set the, the function that it will be able to close when you hit the red X button. Afterwards, we're going to set resizable or like if the window can be resized as false. So for nicer formatting of this window, we're going to call the function this sub hack and we're going to set the frame to visible. We also want to make sure that this frame ends up in the middle of our screen. So we're going to set location relative to null. No. 
After we've done this, we also want to create a game frame instance in our main class. So we're just gonna make And so when we run this, there should be a little frame in our screen right here. The last class we'll need to do is game panel. First, we'll need to import a few libraries. The first library we'll import is java.awt. And we're gonna add an asterisk behind it so that we can import all the elements of java.awt. We also want to import java.awt.event.asterisk and java x.aw.swing.asterisk. 